Greetings, netizens of YouTube. My usual policy is to ignore unconstructive ponage videos made about me with the assorted insults and straw men. But they'll complain and complain and complain and complain and complain. There is little point in responding to people of bad faith who mischaracterize and misinterpret at every turn. However, there are always shades, and the individual I'm responding to in the context of victim blaming and Milo Yiannopoulos may yet be able to frame an argument in less absolute terms than his current approach. One can but hope. Was Lee previously made a response video to my own vid outlining the hypocrisy and repugnant views expressed by Milo Yiannopoulos on paedophilia? If you haven't seen my video, please click on this link now for context. Parts of the video were featured on the Young Peasants podcast and were shown to Milo during the show. At times, he almost looked embarrassed trying to justify his position. Or perhaps that was just wishful thinking on my part. A week or so ago, Lee and myself had an exchange in the comments section of a Skeptic Feminist video where he outlined his objections to my video, his most serious charge being that I was victim-blaming. I will now address this point and flesh out my position on Milo in relation to Hollywood paedophiles and paedophile priests. The traditional concept of victim blaming is described by Wikipedia as Victim blaming occurs when the victim of a crime or of any wrongful act is held entirely or partially responsible for the harm that befell them. The study of victimology seeks to mitigate the perception of victims as responsible. There is a greater tendency to blame victims of rape than victims of robbery if victims and perpetrators know each other. To my mind, the idea of victim blaming in the context of Milo being abused by a priest would be claiming that he was wearing a revealing choir boy gown, that he shouldn't have sat on that priest's knee during confession, or that he told the priest he wanted to fellate him, so the priest naturally couldn't have refused. Here's a classic case of victim blaming from <clears throat> a Catholic priest. Syracuse. The victims of child molesting priests are partly to blame for their own abuse, the Bishop of Syracuse said, in a sworn deposition that revealed his views on the church's sex abuse scandal. Bishop Robert Cunningham testified in a 2011 deposition in response to a federal lawsuit filed by a man who said a priest in the Syracuse diocese sexually abused him as a child. The man's lawyer asked Cunningham whether, in the eyes of the church, a child molested by a priest has committed a sin. The boy is culpable, Cunningham said October 14, 2011, according to a transcript of the deposition. Years later, once this report saw the light of day, the priest apologised for his statement, by the way. Other types of less direct victim blaming include minimising the offence or not believing the victim. This can have a particularly damaging effect of causing victims to blame themselves. There are a number of articles online that reference the rape of women which speak of victim blaming in terms of the survivor choosing not to report the crime. The rub of the argument is that it isn't the victim's responsibility to report the crime in order to jail the offender. While that's true, the fundamental reason behind supporting a victim's decision for not reporting rape is because they fear they won't be believed, bullying from the police or from their peers, or fear being forced to testify in a court process, etc. In any case, it appears that Woz has transposed an argument he is familiar with and is applying it to the sexual abuse of children in his argument against me. This also explains why he keeps banging on about rape culture to me when I've never so much as uttered the words on YouTube. Regardless, I will state my position. Here is a piece on victim blaming of rape victims on Feministing website. The view that all survivors must report to the police is problematic for two reasons. Both are rooted in misogyny, even though the impact is felt survivors of all gender identities. Firstly, the argument is rooted in the belief that it is a woman's responsibility to stop rape. Rape is an act done overwhelmingly by men, yet society still insists on women to keep it from happening to them, whether by telling them to never drink again or to stop wearing short skirts. And second, it is a manifestation of a patriarchal norm that women need to put themselves last and not take care of themselves emotionally or mentally. 
examples like the prevalence of women working the second shift when they get home from their jobs, or the claims that women can never have it all, show how society places a lot of pressure on women. Women are expected to put others first, and this is often to their own detriment. I don't agree that it's a woman's responsibility to stop rape. For example, I don't think that by reporting my being beaten up outside a nightclub made it my responsibility to stop thugs from beating people up. Of course, rape is far worse, but the principle is the same. It isn't a victim's job to stop crime, nor can all crime be stopped. However, the fact is that if crimes are unpunished, not only will the individual perpetrator rape again, but potential rapists may believe that sex forced upon a woman or man is consensual and rape could become more commonplace. The idea is to reduce the number of rape victims. The second point, in my opinion, has some merit. Historically, the role of carer, putting others before oneself, has fallen to women. Most studies suggest that even if men and women work an equal number of hours, that women still do the lion's share of domestic chores. Women, on average, still place the importance of their families above their own career prospects. However, the fact that women may put themselves last doesn't persuade me that believing that victims of abuse should report their crimes amounts to victim blaming. It seems to me that the overriding priority should be to reduce the number of victims of rape or child abuse, and reporting is an important step in this direction. But I would respect the decision of somebody damaged or traumatised to not report, and I wouldn't legislate to force them to. And yes, in some cases, going through the entire procedure, from police examination to court trial, can be as traumatic as the rape or abuse itself, which is why society needs to be so careful treating victims with respect. But this is another area of policy which should be designed to make it easier for survivors to come forward. Let me be as clear as crystal. Milo was not and is not responsible for being abused. He is not to be blamed for the actions of the priest or of other teachers at his school that were abusing children. Milo can choose to believe that his own personal abuse by the hands of a grown man was instigated by Yianopolis. It's absolutely molestation. It wasn't molestation, it was perfectly consensual. I don't think it is when they're 14. When I was 14, trust me, I was the predator. Oh. Um, I was the predator. However, my own view is that he should have reported the activity of the paedophile or paedophiles. I accept that many children don't report for legitimate reasons, fear of not being believed, fear of being punished, through feelings of guilt or of wanting to sweep it under the carpet. But as historic cases of child abuse statistics show, many adults are able to report what happened to them in childhood. In my view, it is entirely reasonable to hold the opinion that the abused should report their crimes to the police in order to prevent others from suffering the same fate. It seems to me that Milo, who went after an individual accused of paedophilic fantasies, is not suffering from a huge trauma that wouldn't allow him to look at the activities of paedophiles he has come into direct contact with. Truth be told, Milo's hounding of Nyberg has always seemed opportunistic and not particularly genuine. Nor has Milo shown any signs of feeling like a victim while speaking on the topic. He is a victim, but it seems unlikely that reporting his crime would traumatise him. It's possible to interpret Milo's refusal to report the priest as being due to a belief that other abused children also enjoyed the attentions of the priest, or that he doesn't really care about child abuse. Indeed, in his response to mine in Kevin Logan's video on TFF, he claimed that boys are somehow better equipped to be abused at a younger age than girls. But we're talking about 13, 25, 13, 28. Um, these things do happen perfectly consensually. Um, often, by the way, it's the women who suffer in these because it's not it, what normally happens in schools. Very often, is it's an older woman with a younger boy, and the boy is the predator in that situation. The women fall in love with these nubile young men. They end up having their lives destroyed. They end up having to move schools, move the country. A bizarre position from a man who draws support from a community that constantly complains that women are sexually abusing boys, but get away with lighter sentences. Surely, this viewpoint should be criticised by men's rights advocates. This would explain why when confronted by men having sex with, quote, very young boys at Hollywood parties, he turned the other way and would not report them to the authorities. Well, that and the fear of being sued. To Milo, it must seem like a consistent position. 
But even a consistent position born through denial does not excuse covering for paedophiles and creating arguments based on paedophilia apologism. Other arguments that Was raises include claiming that Milo's description of adults having sex with very young boys at Hollywood parties meant the boys were 18 years old or older. To briefly deal with this, the context of the point between Rogan and Milo. Rogan asks whether Milo had ever seen or met the Hollywood director and accused paedophile Brian Singer at those Hollywood parties. Brian Singer? Yeah, a bunch of 14-year-old um, predators yeah, going that, after that poor man. I, I, I'm not sure it's the case with him. <laughs> That's a guy You know, I lived in Hollywood a, a while ago. Uh, did you? Brief, briefly. And, did you go um, to one of his parties? I, I went to other people who I won't name um, mm -hmm. of a similar stature in Hollywood. I went to their boat parties and to their house parties and things, and some of the things I have seen have beggared belief. Now, pardon my French, but it's fucking obvious what Milo is referring to when he mentions very young boys. Three times, answering a question involving Brian Singer and Hollywood parties. To address him directly, was, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the award-winning movie An Open Secret, which documents the abuse of five former child stars and their experiences in Hollywood by Oscar-winning director Amy Berg. Now, she didn't win the Oscar for this movie, obviously. If not, I suggest you watch it. Neither is LA a world of fuckery to work in entertainment in Hollywood if you're under 18, as you claimed. A free and easily obtained permit is required. It's called the Entertainment Work Permit. God bless America! And there is no reason at all to suspect that the scale of the problem is underrepresented and covered up because of the predilection for litigation and out-of-court settlements, perhaps? As for your speculation that the, quote, hushed tones between Rogan and Yiannopoulos were due to the fact that some of those men with very young boys actually didn't want it revealed that they were gay, that's just laughable. When did either Milo say or imply that sexuality and not age was the issue? Is Brian Singer considered a paedophile who escaped justice or a misunderstood gay man? And wait, you think we're living in the 1980s? What does it matter in Hollywood if you're gay? Woz goes on to strawman my position into suggesting that I believe, quote, everybody is fucking children and nobody has a problem with it. I have spoken on issues related to paedophilia before and will do so again and nobody could interpret my position as being one of hysteria. What I have done is to examine available statistics on historic child abuse and desperately hope that the drastic increase in numbers of those reporting being abused will not continue. I want to believe that we have reached a peak and that awareness and regulation will reduce cases of paedophilia, but the jury is still out. I find it incredible that Lee's emphasis, in line with typical anti-positioning on YouTube, isn't on the problem, but on an alleged overreaction to a symptom that I'm not even suffering from. Were I to respond in kind, I could call this a form of victim blaming, because the implication of your statement implies that child abuse isn't widespread. This is minimising child abuse. In fact, Woz, who says that he attacks hypocrisy, previously suggested, I have no idea if he's changed his mind, that Milo had made this story up. The defence used by Lee is that Milo is a professional troll who might be lying about this and is not to be taken seriously. This is nonsensical to me on many levels. To begin with, not believing the victim is a form of the very charge Woz levels against me. It's victim blaming. So much for hypocrisy. Did everyone else in the United Kingdom give up on criticising Boris Johnson as the Mayor of London because he's a professional buffoon? Milo is a journalist and editor at Breitbart and in case you hadn't noticed has influence over quite a large constituency of people. He should face scrutiny in the same way as everybody else. He does not get the free pass for being a troll. Look. I'll be honest, some circles might consider my position to be victim-blaming for wanting an adult with agency and no sign of trauma to report the names of those who abused him. But that isn't my position, and my position remains the same across the board, whether it's Milo or anyone else, who, for want of a better word, owns that part of their past. So show me the hypocrisy in this position. But the rest of your contentions are pretty nonsensical. 
I understand that part of your shtick is to play devil's advocate, but a bit more research and a bit more honesty on this topic would be appreciated. All you've done is given me the opportunity to show that I develop my own opinions which I am happy to apply consistently. And these positions are entirely in line with social justice of John Rawls and not the definition you wish to attribute to social justice without of course knowing fuck all about it. If you want to discuss this topic, I'd be happy to oblige. But if this is all some joke for you in the name of entertainment, then be straight about it and I'll disregard you in the same way I do as the other Ponage merchants. But I live in hope. You think people back pedophiles? Yes, who, they do. who backs pedophiles? Well, they make excuses for them. But as, other than, they make well, excuses for them. Some of those relationships between younger boys and older men, the sort of coming of age relationships, the relationships in which those older men ha help those young boys to discover who they are and give them security and safety and provide them with love and, and so they can you even know, um, save those young boys from desolation, I've, uh, from suicide, from drug addiction.